Let's settle this with Larry Kudlow, the President's Chief Economic Advisor, who joins us now. Larry, please give us some clarity on phase one of the China trade deal. Where does it stand? Well, the clarity is involved uh, with the President's tweet last evening that you accurately quoted. The deal is fully intact. And, you know, that's been the reports coming from Ambassador Lighthizer, one of the principal architects of the deal. Actually, China has been picking up its game in the last month. Uh, according to uh, Trade Rep Lighthizer. And uh, I've been to several meetings in the Oval uh, with Bob and Steve Mnuchin and the President and others. And, you know, that's been our view. They've actually picked up their game. It's not just commodity buying, although that is picking up too. Some of the structural issues like IP theft. I mean, look, can I just say, uh, you know, if you're in the arena, if you're doing the media stuff a lot, you're going to let one or two get away. I think it's happened to all of us. Okay. Yeah. I've known Peter Navarro a long time. He's a very smart guy. He's working hard for the president. Uh, I think he misspoke, and then I think he straightened it out. And um, the okay. trade deal right. is on. No okay. question about it. Let's leave it right there. That's clarity for you. Thanks, Larry. Now, why does the president want to cut down on skilled workers? He's proposing this executive order on H-1B-1 visas. A lot of those people work in our high-tech companies, and they, they are needed in our society. Why does the president want to cut down on them? Well, look, uh, there's a pause going on here, and that pause is directly related to the pandemic uh, collapse of the economy. And I think that the president's view, and uh, I served on that task force, and we agreed that we have to help Americans get back to work first. That's the top priority. You know, in particular, Stu, I mean, if you look down, uh, we made adjustments to the H-1B, uh, the H-2, J, L. There will be some exclusions and waivers, first of all. But second of all, it's the middle-income folks and the lower-income folks that got hurt the most. I mean, minority groups got slammed mm -hmm. during this pandemic contraction. And I think this, again, this is uh, temporary to the end of the year, and then it'll be reviewed pending the outcome of the economy. I but, think he's on the right track here. But look, if, if American companies cannot get the skilled workers that they need, for whatever reason, if you cut off the supply of those skilled workers, you do slow down the rate of economic recovery, don't you? I think in the long term, you're right. But I don't think that's really our intent. I mean, our overall attempt for immigration reform is to build back a merit-based system. Okay, that's where we want to go. And we want to uh, slow down or even uh, end the family chain system, okay, which has not been helpful to our economy. And um, regrettably, there's been a lot of uh, unlawful and illegal immigrants. Now, the, the point, though, is this. Let these companies interview and take wage offers from Americans first. I mean, that's all it says. Just start right here with Americans. There have been some companies, not all, but some companies uh, that have avoided uh, higher priced American wages in order to get lower priced uh, foreign wages. It's a bad arbitrage for the United States. And incidentally, uh, in the H-1B reform, which I think will last uh, the test of time, uh, those people uh, who have been offered the highest wages will have first dibs on the job. It's kind of like a reverse auction. So I, I think this is a necessary reform. You know, in terms of the wage scale, some of these H-1Bs, uh, I, I know they're skillful. They're, they're not necessarily, you know, out, out of interplanetary skillful. Lots of people can do these jobs. We train well in the United States. But their wages are only about 17 percent of the medium, and we want to raise that up to at least 50 percent of the medium. So that's part of this reform. But most of all, let's help American workers first, and let's look to the middle class and the low-end wage earners who had been, in President Trump's first three years, it was the low-end wages, uh, wage earners who had the fastest growth, higher than the top end. So we just want to give them first dibs as we recover, reopen the economy, and uh, as we go through this V-shaped recovery. I'm going to give you a headline from the Washington Post. It reads, and I'll tell you now, Trump tells AIDS he backs new round of stimulus. And I think the article goes on to suggest that, you're in, that the president is in favor of generous, that's his words, generous direct payments to people. Any comment on that? 
Um, look, I, I think, number one, uh, there will be a healthy discussion after the July 4th recess about the next move uh, regarding economic policy. Uh, my hope is we move from rescue to uh, economic growth incentives. By the way, the rescue has worked beautifully. You know, there are green shoots sprouting up everywhere. But what and about I think, direct I think payments the, sec to people? the second half of the year, you're going to get 20% economic growth. Okay. And if we just get 5% in the first quarter of uh, 2021, we will be back to the peak in the economy but, of 2019. Now, this, to your point, Stu, yeah. I hear you. Um, I think the tax rebates or the direct mail checks are on the table. Uh, this is all pre-decisional. There's a lot of discussions going on. Uh, probably we would want to target those uh, to those uh, folks who lost their jobs and are most in need. All right, that's a speculation okay. on my part, but I think this is just where it's going. Don't forget, please, the president wants incentive-oriented policies. He wants a payroll tax holiday, provide incentive for people to come back to work. He wants a reemployment incentive to come back to work. He's talked about capital gains. He's talked about business expensing. He's talked about deductions for restaurants, entertainment, sporting events, okay. and uh, sightseeing and tourism. So we want this to be a constructive package. And... Um, it may be that the tax rebates will be part of that. I, I don't want to say for sure. I don't want to say not, but I know it's on the table. In 30 seconds, can you tell us absolutely, definitely, no second lockdown? Yes, absolutely, definitely. And you know what? There's, there's some states that there are, have uh, uh, some issues, no question. I look at my list here, Arizona, Florida, Nevada, Carolina, Oregon, Texas. I don't deny that. There's no question about it. On the other hand... The testing has risen astronomically, so the case rate's gone up a bit. Um, the fatality rate continues to come down. That's a very important fact. And, Stu, just for the record, because a lot of people don't want to report this, uh, the reality is we've had huge declines in the case rate, okay? Uh, Colorado, minus 30. The D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, minus 31 percent. Illinois, minus 36 percent. Uh, Michigan, minus 80 percent. The New York metropolitan area, minus 20 percent. Uh, these are so you, you're getting some increases, hot spots. We know how to deal with them. We send in CDC teams. We have a lot of experience now. We've got the right equipment and people have got to continue to practice, you know, good safety guidelines of distancing and masks where necessary. So there's just as many examples of the case rate coming down significantly as they are coming up. And in fact, CDC tells me you've got 37 states right now as the past week who are in very good shape. OK, all the trend lines coming down. You have 13 states that have some hot spots. I acknowledge that. But none of this requires another shutdown of the economy. There got is it. no second wave. Some are doing fabulous. Some are still uh, have to be very careful. That's the way life's going to work. Mostly, as this economy reopens, it's going to be a V-shaped boom. I believe that's what all these uh, green shoots are telling us, whether it's retail sales or jobs or Apple mobility travel or housing demand or new business applications. I, I think the evidence is overwhelming at this point. You got it all in there. V-shaped <laughs> boom. All right, Larry, thanks very much indeed. We'll Thank see you. you soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate